Shalimar by Guerlain is the classic oriental perfume. Bing! I have some right here from my personal collection. It is a gorgeous combination of soft amber, smoky vanilla, and a little cinnamony spice and musk. Very sensual, a little bit sweet. Now this is a perfume with a past. This is a perfume with a bad reputation. It was first released in 1925 by Jacques Guerlain himself, and was quickly adopted by the 1920s bad girls. Oh yeah, those flappers love their Shalimar. In fact, they used to say in the 1920s that there were three things that a, a lady never did. Smoke, dance the tango, and wear Shalimar. Of course you wanna wear Shalimar after you hear that. Now, this thing has been going strong for decades and decades and decades, and that's because it's a vavavoom perfume, but it is classy. It is not just wah, in your face, legs spread, here I am, skirt up over its head, no. Uh, it's subtle, it wears like a your skin but better scent, and I think that's because of the leathery quality. Now, when Shalimar kicks off on your skin, there's a little bit of citrus lightness there. Uh, it's a little bit deceptive because that goes away pretty quickly, but you will, if you're paying attention, you'll smell lemon. There's a little bit of bergamot, which is uh, the peel of an orange, a little bit of tartness, and that smooths out pretty quickly. Uh, zips right past some very subtle florals. There's powdery iris in there. There's a little bit of rose, but Shalimar is not about flowers at all. No way, no sir, no how. It gets right down to a papanax, which is uh, another word for sweet myrrh, which is a, a very sweet and earthy resin. And, and then it gets right into incense and a very smoky vanilla. You, you can smell that cinnamon. Um, I sprayed this uh, Shalimar on my skin. I have the Eau de Parfum, by the way, um, probably about a, an hour ago now. And, and it's just glorious. It's, it really is into that kind of burnt creme brulee vanilla and leather. And that's the thing about the vanilla in Shalimar. It is not a cupcake vanilla. It's not like, ooh, vanilla ice cream. It's, uh, it is like a, like a burnt, burnt sugar, um, creme brulee, kind of a European vanilla smell. Now, not everyone uh, ha has a hankering for Shalimar the way I do. Um, some people have a problem with the fact that it is powdery. It is definitely, it definitely has that kind of powdery quality. Uh, and the other thing is um, they find the vanilla a little strange because it isn't like the pink sugar variety. It's not, it, it's not very, it's not that accessible um, Turkish taffy uh, confectionery vanilla smell. It's, it's, not, it's not a cupcake. It's not white chocolate. Um, it, it definitely has a little bit of a strange kink to it. But the thing that's great about Shalimar is that it really blends with your skin. It, it develops a, a leathery quality and it almost smells like, like velvet. If velvet, if velvet had a smell, it could be Shalimar. Shalimar is still relevant today, even though it was, it's pretty much coming up in the next decade or so, it'll be coming up to its uh, hundredth anniversary, but it is still relevant because it's the godmother of all of the gourmand perfumes that are so popular today, uh, Thierry Mugler, Angel, um, all the Angel children like Victor and Rolf, Flower Bomb, all of those sweet perfumes, they can trace their family tree, their lineage back to Shalimar. Shalimar, uh, also something that's kind of cool about it is that it still has the um, urn-shaped bottle, which was originally rendered in, in Baccarat crystal. Uh, so this is it's funny, I didn't know that this was an urn. I thought it was a, a harp, bling. But um, it turns out that this is this represents an urn. Uh, oh, and Frederick Mall, who has a fantastic perfume line, he says that Shalimar is the inspiration for one of his fragrances, Musk Ravageur, which is uh, also a perfume with a bad reputation. And also a perfume like Shalimar that is worn by both men and women. Uh, Shalimar typically is sold as a woman's perfume, but in the know guys, they check out the Eau de Toilette, which is a little bit lighter. 
it's uh, it's definitely uh, it's it's not quite as as sweet. I like to wear it in the eau de parfum because it the leathery quality comes out a little bit more, and uh, in the pure parfum version, that's where it becomes its most gourmand. That's where you pick up on the cinnamon and 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 the vanilla, and it, and it really becomes like. Um, a gorgeous uh, dessert that you you may have eaten in France in 1945. Oh, no, that's too soon after the war. Maybe 1957 in, in France. I'll meet you there. Get in your time machine and I'll meet you there. Anyway, uh, Chalamar, great perfume. If uh, it comes with its own bad reputation, so you don't have to sell yours. You don't have to get your fingers dirty. Just let Chalamar do all the work. I'm Katie Puckrick. And I smell.